This is All right, today's a big day for China. How appropriate that you showed up here. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Ag Bank? Did you get into that at all? Uh, well, we're not actually subscribing to the IPO, but uh, for good reason. We are fully allocated already in Shanghai A share stocks. Every dollar we have and then some is uh, pushed all in at this point. We uh, at Marco Polo feel Shanghai has bottomed this month in July and that we're headed for a, a multi-year comeback for the market. Okay, so. now before I get into that, yeah. in, in, in terms of uh, why the market has bottomed, let me just ask you about <clears> Ag <throat> Bank uh, <throat> itself. I mean, you, you like the financials in mm -hmm. China. Um, what is it about the uh, financials and the bank plays that uh, compel you right now? Well, uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, when we see a market, in, when we've seen the Shanghai market in the past turn up, uh, we've seen pretty high beta coming out of the financial sectors. So uh, for fund managers like us that uh, do believe in a, in a return to a bull market over the next <clears throat> 24 months, uh, it would probably be wise to be in financial names. They mm -hmm. tend to have a high beta on, on uh, bull markets. So you know, insurance companies uh, in particular, because they have a lot of underlying assets in the market itself, mm -hmm. uh, securities companies as well, but the entire financial uh, sector is attractive. And also it's obviously a very low value. Valuation. We just touched a 16-month low in the market, so uh, bank stocks in general are also trading very cheap. What about the pace of loans right now? Because mm -hmm. uh, yesterday it was interesting. We had Fitch coming out saying that the loans reported last mm -hmm. month was actually well below what's actually being lent out mm -hmm. these days. We still have the economy swashed with 600 billion yuan of cash, right. and, and um, some are saying that these could result in big loan losses for these banks. Uh, well, we're not seeing a, a, a significant rise in non-performing loans like we did, say, back in 2003, 2004. Um, yeah, we don't expect that to happen. I think the, the overarching macroeconomic data right now is, a, is very robust, and it would not indicate that we're going to see some wave of MPLs, that we have consumption up about 20 percent year over year, exports up 30, 40 percent year over year, GDP growth, which is you know, coming in today probably around 10 percent, which is a very healthy number. Uh, it wouldn't indicate to us that we're going to see uh, non-performing loans increase right now. Is 10 percent a healthy number, Aaron? <clears throat> because we, we just heard from Stephen Green of Stan right. Chart who says there, there is some froth in the economy. It, mm. it's, there are concerns of overheating, especially when you look yeah. at the property sector and uh, other sec sections of the economy as well. No, I, I would say the, the most obvious and glaring indicator for an over overheating uh, situation would be inflation. Uh, we don't see uh, a, a dramatic uh, bump in inflation. We're running at about 3%, which is a very healthy number. And oil prices, as you know, are down towards $70, which is very reasonable. If anything, this would be a good time to press the gas and get more money into the system while inflation is low, mm -hmm. because eventually, probably in a year or two down the line, we're going to be having these same talks with inflation numbers back up towards 5 to 10 percent. That would be a time that we would say the economy is running frothy. I, I don't think we're seeing froth right now. Okay. Yeah. And what about uh, you know, the talk of a bubble right now in, mm. in the property sector? Could that inflate into inflation and maybe we could see that run up because property prices continue <clears> to gain? We're looking at 11 percent year-on-year increases still. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think there's a genuine demand for property and property prices are, are right, rightfully going up in China. Again, we have 700 million people still living in, in, in the fields, essentially, that are moving into the cities. There's a lot of real demand. Unlike the U.S., uh, you know, uh, in China, for the last four quarters, 25 percent of home purchases were in all cash. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you also know, it's a very uh, stringent uh, regulation in terms of how much leverage people can take out on their homes. So there's a lot of equity in China right now in terms of those homes. So it is not uh, a credit-fueled housing bubble. It's a demand-fueled uh, rise in housing yeah, prices. Yeah, cash. Cash. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people with uh, hard cash yeah. on the mainland. <clears throat> uh, now, back in May, you were saying to go long on property. May of last mm. year. And you right. also said that Chinese stocks would make a new record high in five years. Right. Do you still believe in that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, 6,500 points, which is essentially our historical high back in 2007, I think we're, we're going to break that number before 2013. Uh, I think that's very reasonable. We're trading today at a PE of 2010 around 12. The lowest we've ever been is an 11. 
So we are nipping at all-time 20-year uh, historic lows on valuations. Mm -hmm. uh, we ca we've come down from a 72 PE. Uh, if you forecast 30% earnings growth in this market for the next three years, and you figure we end up at a median PE of about a 2025, which is very reasonable for the, those sorts of growth rates, that would put you in the six to 10,000 point range over the next uh, two six to three to years. Six to 10,000 point yeah. range. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty big from here. Almost doubling yeah. the uh, current levels. <clears throat> now, before we go, I quickly want to ask you about IPOs. You know, we have AgBank, massive IPO dropping on the markets today. You know, there's talk that China might be suspending IPOs in the future. Mm. Do you see maybe some choppy trading, even a decline in Shanghai because of the liquidity being driven up uh, and sucked up by Ag Bank? No, no. I think that um, we have seen a, so a, a bit of a down market in the first six months of this year, which I, I think in part is due from the massive amounts of, of issuance that we've had. But that issuance, actually, it's, it's sort of ironic because these banks have been sucking up a lot of liquidity. But what they ultimately do with that capital is they recycle it back into the economy. After they meet their reserve requirements, then they re-gear the capital about nine times over because the reserve requirement's about 12% mm -hmm. and re-lend it. So for the 40 billion or so money that's been raised uh, in, in uh, equity issuance this, this past six months or so, uh, a good chunk of that is headed back into the economy over the next four quarters and it's gonna look a lot bigger than 40 billion when it hits. So okay. I think uh, we'll see that liquidity coming back to market. All right, Aaron, yeah. thanks for dropping by. Nice okay. seeing you.